If you have your Bibles, first in the book of Genesis, this will be real easy to find. Genesis chapter number 5. Genesis chapter number 5. I'm going to try to take my time and, and, and deal specifically with ideals and, and things that God has revealed in this Scripture. After you put your finger there in Genesis chapter number 5, verses around 21. Then look over in Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 and verses 5 and 6. So that is Genesis chapter number 5. Hebrews chapter number 11. When you get that, go ahead and stand with me to your feet. Praise the Lord. As somebody once said, what else would you stand to? Amen. Praise the Lord. They like when I say that for some reason. Hallelujah. I want you to think on this thought before we read our Scripture. Understanding the idea that God had for Enoch to walk with him. Understand what God was talking about when He walked with Enoch. The text, Genesis 5, 21-24. Enoch lived 65 years and then he begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Verse number 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away, or translated, so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Not a mystery there, folks. Hallelujah. God has taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Thank God He rewards His people for seeking Him today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we seek You this morning for revelation. We seek You this morning, God, for Your Word to be established in our heart that we might not sin against You, that it will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And Lord, that we will see Your Spirit move mightily in this place. We will open up our heart. And Lord, You do what needs to be done in us. And we give You praise and glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want you to think on this thought just for a moment. Up until this point of time, if you look at Scriptures, you see where people come to God and worship or come to Him in a religious fashion. But this is the first time we're going to see somebody actually walking with God. Remember, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. But now we're talking about walking with God spiritually. Walking with Him spiritually. Okay. God is always looking for someone to walk with. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Someone whose heart can be after His heart and who will only do what is pleasing to the Lord. God created man for the enjoyment of, of a walking relationship that involved... Now listen, here's what God's relationship with us involves. Number one, companionship. Companionship. Number two, dialogue. You must speak to... This is daily. This isn't just every now and then. So listen, companionship, dialogue, intimacy, joint decision-making with the Lord, mutual delight, and also shared dominion. That's what it means to walk with the Lord. It means to wake up in the morning with the Lord and go to sleep at night with the Lord and live with the Lord all the way through the day. Man, that's walking with God. It's not just coming to a Sunday morning service or a Wednesday night service or, or going to a Bible study. It's about meeting with God every day. Amen. Amen. He wants a walking partner today, church. Hallelujah. Now listen, 
The same way that God desired to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. God longs to walk with us today. Which is why His arms of grace has been pulling you in to a closer walk with Him. Something deeper. Something closer. Something more evident than you've ever seen before in the Lord. God longs to walk with you. Which is why. Which is why His arms are extended this morning to reach out and to take us where we need to go. Enoch was the first man in the Bible who walked with God. Even though men began to call upon the name of the Lord, it says in Genesis 4.26, it said that men began to call on the name of the Lord, but it said Enoch was the first man to uncover the idea of walking daily with God. Amen? So let's go on just a little bit further. He found something even Adam didn't experience. He pressed into God until he learned how to commune with God through every facet of his life. Now here's where we need to stop, folks. We can't circumvent the Spirit of the Lord out of our life. Yes. Whether we're doing our taxes, or whether we're going in the voting booth, or whether we're telling somebody an untruth, it's up to us. Yes. Amen? Right. Praise God. And we need to un understand today that we need God in every facet of our life. Yes. If you don't, you'll come to a place in your life where the devil has a place to put a hook. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Every place. I want to say that again because we're coming up on voting pretty soon. I don't see how a Christian can vote to kill unborn babies. Amen. I'm not talking about politics, folks. I'm just talking about what's right and what's wrong. Walking with God. It means your eyesight is clearer to see the things that the world cannot see. The things that have blinded the world. Enoch's example continues to witness to all generations of the great zeal God has because He wants to walk with us. When the zeal of God captures you, it will ignite a fire and a passion inside of you to walk with God and to be God's friend. Yes. I may ever remember singing the song, I'm a friend of God. I mean, glad you're God's friend today. Amen. Thank the Lord. <laughs> it's good to have a friend like that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. As you draw closer to God, he may, not, he may not likely take you up to heaven like He did with Enoch. However, He does desire to reveal Himself in a greater way. Yes. You will experience something greater with Him. When we walk with God, we enter the dimension where God unfolds the secrets of His kingdom. See, that's what we're looking for, folks. Whenever we pray for the sick and they recover, that's the secret of walking with God. When you go in and be led by the Spirit and the Holy Spirit deals with you to do something and you act upon it and you see where the Holy Spirit works through that and where God is glorified and revealed. It's opening ourselves up to where the Lord is on tap in our life. If we come in contact, the Lord is in tap on our life. It's coming out. <coughs> the water of the Lord. The sweet water is constantly coming out. Bless them, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. Lift them up. Strengthen them, Lord. We want to encourage one another and walk with the Lord. Because I'm telling you, love, folks, it's going to take a closer walk with the Lord. That song, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Hallelujah. Closer. And listen, the closer that you get with the Lord, the less people you find is around you. If you go the extra, extra mile, you ever heard anybody go on the extra mile? If you go the extra mile, you'll find out there's few people that went there. Amen? Amen? But we as Christians... When it comes to things of God, we should want to do everything for the kingdom of God. Now think about it. Just, just think on that thought, walking with God. Think about the people you come in contact with. Think about the people you talk with on the phone daily. That is an opportunity for you to walk with God and for Him to spill out of your life and the anointing of God to be so full of God that His anointing flows out of you and begins to touch other people. Well, guess what? Whenever it flows out of you, 
and begins to touch other people. You know what we've got to do? We've got to go back to the, to the source and we've got to refill. Yes. And refill. Because folks, you can only give out so much and then you'll be empty. But the Lord said, come back and I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to refresh and revive and renew. And now, folks, this is our opportunity. This is our moment when we step out in this world to be the voice for the Lord. To be His mouth, mouthpiece. To be His hands. His feet. To go where He wants us to go. To say what He wants us to say. Do you know the people? I believe... You know, we talk about a lot of things that we've, we've heard in the past, but one of the songs that I remember uh, talking about people that we meet in heaven that we didn't realize on the earth that got saved through our ministries. And I'm talking about through the giving of, of maybe funds to missions or maybe it was preaching or teaching or Sunday school lesson or whatever it may be. I believe whenever you get to heaven, you're going to see a line of people that were touched because you wanted to walk with God. I'll tell you this. When you start walking with God, more people will show up. Because they want to feel what, what you have. Can I tell you this? People today in this world, they're looking for peace. They're looking for love. And here the church is full of it inside the building. Oh... We just need to unleash it on the world yes. to walk with God. See, whenever I walk with God, that meant I, He walked with me on the way over here. It's not just I'm coming to meet in a service, but it's that He walks with you everywhere you go. That means everywhere you go, you can tell somebody about the Lord. You know, that that's probably one of my favorite stories about a gentleman who was a minister and his, and his mom was always testifying and always telling people and inviting them to, to be saved. And so he, he said, Mom, can we go to the grocery store? Can we go to the gas station without you telling somebody about the Lord? And she said, why? <laughs> so they were fixing to board a plane. And he said, Mom, if you would, just, just sit still and just let me sleep and just uh, don't say anything about the Lord if you would. She says, I won't say anything anything if nobody asked. <laughs> so she got on the plane, went back to her seat and says, hey, is this seat saved? <laughs> he said, no. But she said, well, let me tell you, I am. Let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> Whoever knew that a seat, a seat could start the conversation. But can I tell you, whenever it's bubbling in your soul, He's all you want to talk about. But whenever you become complex and perplexed by this world, you forget about how good the Lord is. How good He is. Amen. Walking with Him every day. Let your children see it. Let your grandchildren see it. Let the church see it. Let the people that we that that uh, come that we bring to church. Let them see us have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Something greater than just talking about it. Anybody can talk about the Lord, but living for Him. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where the struggles begin, is whenever we begin to live for the Lord and try to walk out the preaching and try to walk out the Word of God and try to walk out those things that God has revealed to us. Walking with God. Walking with God. Praise God. Through Christ, we can explore the glorious riches of knowing God to a greater degree than even Enoch did because Enoch didn't have the fullness of the Spirit which has been given to us now. So in other words, now that we have the ability to walk with God, we have the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. And not only that, but the Bible says now He's in us. Aren't you glad the Holy Spirit is in us today? Not just leading us from an outward expression, but now He's inside of our life. Listen to this. We are the habitation. We are the house for the Holy Spirit. Clean that house up and get ready because here comes the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get that house all clean because we're walking with God now. Hallelujah. How many knows this? When you walk with God and your temple's clean, people will see there's something there. Let me tell you something, friend. I've lived around 
uh, Christians, some, some of the time I was around them, I was saved. Some of the time I wasn't saved. But I've lived around Christians long enough that I know they've got a peace that will surpass all understanding. And I know that they've got a love that will go past uh, a love that is conditional. And we have the expression of God and the characteristics of God to go greater and bigger than we've ever done before as a church and as a people of God. To walk with Him. To make every day of our life surround the Lord instead of us wanting the Lord to surround our life. Amen? Let's go on just a little bit further. Now, now we're going to look at this in three ways. The first one is the subject of walking with God. Any walk with God continually. Conversing with Him and growing closer to Him. In Him we see a new kind of believer. He walked arm in arm every day with the Lord. The Lord was His very life, so much so that at the end of His life, He did not taste death but he was translated. Now think of this just for a moment. We today that see the Lord come back to get his church and to take us home. Now those that are ready to see that, those we will not taste death if we walk with the Lord. The Bible says this. If I die, and I'll go. I'll be, the, the Bible says to be absent from this body is to be ever present with the Lord. But I believe we have a chance of being that church that ushers in the return. Do you know what that means? For the child of God that sees Him return, they shall not taste death. And it shows that. Never before has anybody be translated because they pleased God. Enoch was showing that his life was so was so in tune with God that he just one day just ceased to exist. He was walking along the road one day and then he was translated out. Amen. As though he was never there. Now let me tell you this. We go on to see a little bit more deeper about Enoch because if you look, and I'm not going to give you the exact dates, but it says that he was Methuselah's uh, father. We know he was an old man. We know he was in around 900 something years old. We also know there was another man that was before Enoch that was 900 years old. At this time, Enoch was around 375, 76 something. I got to row down up there. I'll give it to you exactly in a minute. He was in the first one third of his life. It wasn't like he was at the end of his life. In our now, now you got to look three hundred something. I know that's that's a lot, but in the average man today, I'm just going to say seventy five. That would be the first twenty five years of our life, dedicating and walking with the Lord. Why is that important? Because he had a wife, he had children. His life went on. When he was translated out, he was not at, at an old age at that moment, but the Lord translated him because He was going to use him for another moment in time. So get that in your spirit. If you walk with the Lord, if you have relationship with the Lord, when the trump of God sounds, you will not experience death, but you will leave and be resurrected out of this. It says... It said, the, the preacher said this. He says, my church is going first. He said, that's not scripture. It says, yes, it is. It said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> I won't mind to be re remaining in alive. Amen. Amen. If I'm going to be a church, I want to remain and be alive. I don't want to be dead. I want to be alive this morning, church. Yes. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to walk with Him. Hallelujah. So we can't use the excuse of that we've got too many other things to do. He had just as many things to do as we did. Yes. But He walked. He chose to walk with God. Like any, those who walk closely with God are translated. Now listen, translated out of Satan's reach. 
taken out of the kingdom of darkness according to Colossians 1.13. The Bible says that the Lord has taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and put us into the kingdom of light. Okay, here's what you got to do to walk with the Lord. You got to walk in the light. You got to walk in the light. Be led. Let me tell you something, friend. If we've ever needed a time in our life to be led by the Holy Spirit, it's right now. Amen. To be led by God. How many knows that all of us today, and I'm just going to tell you from my standpoint, and you can say it from you, when I make a decision, I need to let the Lord lead me how to make that decision. Amen. But how many know sometimes we're stone-faced and have our mind made up? How many knows this? Sometimes God says yes, but sometimes God says no. And sometimes He says, be still and be quiet. But however He does it, I'm walking with Him. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, and I might not even know why, I might be thinking, Lord, I'm over here and You're telling me to be quiet. And I'm hurt and I want to, I want to scream out. I want to tell somebody I'm hurt. He said, no, be quiet. And then you look around and there's the devil looking for you right over there. And when you be quiet, the Lord covers you and He can't, can't get to you. That's what we're talking about. Walking with God is being in a place where the devil, you're not in the darkness any longer. You're not walking in His turf or His terrain. You're fighting in a spiritual realm today. So we're not going to fight against flesh and blood. We're going to get in the Spirit. We're going to get on our knees. We're going to start praying. We're going to start reading the Word of God. We're going to start trusting God. We're going to start believing when we pray something and we believe it in faith that we're going to wake up or we're going to hear get a phone call and it's going to be come to pass because of our faith with God and our relationship with Him. Let me tell you something. You might not think it's that important, but there's people around you right now that are wanting to give up. We got to show them. There ain't no quit in the church. There ain't no quit in the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah! Oh, it's just getting it's just getting tough now. That's all right. The Lord told us it was coming, devil. So you can take that that lie somewhere else. Amen. Hallelujah! Praise God. If there's one thing we see today that we see in the midst of the world that we're living in. It's nothing but chaos. And there's one thing that needs to happen. God's Spirit needs to take control. Amen. That's right. He said He raises people in leadership and He brings them down. Yes. He raises governments today and He tears them down. Why? Because it's God's kingdom. He's sovereign. He can do what He wants to do and I'm going to still love Him and still praise Him and still worship Him. But I'm not going to be drawn in to a worldly war. Did you hear what I said? I'm not going to be drawn into a worldly war. We want to take it back to the Lord. Let me tell you something, friend. Only hope America ever has is whenever God is put back at the forefront. That's the only hope you'll ever get. Ever have. And let me tell you, because that leads you from not only to the temporal, but the eternal. Things in this life are just temporal. Temporary. The Lord talks about temporary things just one time. And eternal things over 44 times. Because he says, lay your treasures up in heaven where the moth and the rust does not corrupt and steal. And the thieves cannot break through and steal. The rust can't get to it. The moth can't destroy it. God said, if you give it to Him, I'll take care of it. Now, right now, what's your treasure? <clears throat> the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. It's got to be on the love of the Lord, the salvation that you have. How about your family? Is that your treasure? Take them up before the Lord and, 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 and bring them before the Lord and let Him take them. Let Him take our prayers and bottle them up. 
Because one day they're going to be opened up and those prayers are going to be poured out. Let the church be church. I that what that one uh get over here and read this real quick. I I was let the lost be found and the dead be raised. In the here and now, let love invade. Let the church live loud. Our God will say, we believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail. For the power of God has torn the veil from the top to the bottom. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. We're believers, folks. We're believers this morning. We're believers in the Lord. Hallelujah. That means you act upon what you believe. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo. Ha. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Oh, acting upon what we know this morning. To walk with God. To walk with God. To walk with Him. That mindset has entered in to the church. And I'm talking about the mindset of coming and meeting God meeting with God. And it is great. There's nothing wrong with corporate anointing and corporate meeting. And, and, and that's a part of who we are in the Lord this morning. It's who we are coming together and being the church. But whenever we come together as a church, let our voice speak hope. Let our words bring help to the situation. Let us lift up and encourage and be the church that God has called us to be. I want to just give you a picture of just a moment. You know, if we look at the world, the Bible declares to us that they're, they're blind. They cannot see. They're not being able to sense God's presence. They're, the Bible says they're poor, they're hungry, they're sick, they're diseased. That's the world. That's what sin brought in. So whenever we get to people that are lost, they're blind, they can't see, they can't, they can't follow you. You've got to grab them. You gotta tell them about the Lord. And if it takes you grabbing them by the hand and taking them till their eyes open up their own self, but whatever it takes, that we become the church. That we encourage, that we strengthen, that we're alive and well. That God is not old and decrepit. Yes. That God is not senile, but he sees and knows everything that is going on today. That he sees a widow or an orphan crying out. You know how many times that I've heard story after story about orphans and going into foster care and things and the children going behind the couch because they were afraid. And in the midst of that, coming out somehow or another seeing a picture of Jesus and saying, that's the man that was with me. <laughs> While well, I was crying and could not see any way out. It's being the church. It's lifting up a voice of hope in the midst of all of the negativity and all the difficulty that's going on and saying, God lives. He's alive forevermore. He gave His life that the world might be saved. And we with the voice and the message of salvation has let our voice not be heard. Lord, stir up that gift that's with inside of us. Right now, if you would stand with me to your feet right now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share with you what the Lord the, the reason that I feel like that the Lord has shared this message about walking with the Lord 
I believe He's trying to get us prepared for that outpouring of His Spirit. It's coming right now. Oh yes, they said there's going to be perilous times. Well, I can show you perilous times all around this world today. But He said at the same time, I'm going to pour out My Spirit upon all people. Upon all flesh and blood. Hallelujah. He wants to pour out His Spirit. But here's what I want you to get this morning. I'm talking for me. I, I'm not saying this for anybody else, but I'm talking about for me. My relationship with the Lord about being that beacon of hope and being that child of God and being that victorious one in the midst of these trials that we're going in, the Lord is showing me I want to bring you back to that aspect of your life. Where you're focused again. Let me tell you something, friend. There's, there's, there's things happening all around us that's trying to get our attention and get our eyes off the Lord. But the Bible says to get your eyes back on the Lord and follow Him because He's leading and guiding us. And whenever we finish up, our citizenship is going to be in heaven, church. Yes. It's not going to be on this earth. It's not going to be in the houses that we build or the cars we drive or the things that's on this earth. All these things are going to be passed away. And this earth is going to be devoured by fire. But praise God, they that believed, we are going to live and reign throughout all eternity with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the first starting point as we start this service, I want, I want you to make sure right now that everything is right between us and the Lord right now. now I know we